All right. Adam told me to tell you guys, be careful. You're on episode three, season one, building puffers. Um, He's going to show you guys in this particular episode some really cool stuff that you can do just to make it your own work of art. But you need to be careful. Listen to what he says. Do exactly what he says. Be careful. Do your homework. Ohm's laws, battery specs, all that stuff. Um, and that's it. You guys be good. Oh, hey, hey, what's going on, Nomads? So, time for episode three. We're actually going to get to building our mod now. If you watched episode two, you kind of know what all you need. And <clears throat> maybe you got it on hand right now. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're watching this, so you'll be ready later. So, let's go over what you should have real quick. Um, you should have your enclosure. Um, you should have a sled. You should have the clips for the sled. Now, you got a lot more to need here, but you get the drift. Um, you should have everything we talked about that was showed in episode two. Your wire, solder, flux. If you didn't see episode two, probably a good idea to go back and watch it and uh, kind of get your stuff set up. Unless you're already set up, obviously. If you built a few mods, maybe you already got all this stuff. You also need your magnets for your enclosure. Um, you're going to need your MOSFET. Your 15K resistor, your 510, your ground strap, oh yeah, and your MyTech switch, or whichever switch you got, okay, that's what I'm using as MyTech for this one, it's MyTech 12 millimeter stainless steel, um, and you know, that's pretty much about it, um, so let me say a few things, one, let me go over this real quick before we even get started, I'll show this up close as well. Um, I wanted to go ahead and make this video on the weekend before I get busy with work this week, so I didn't wait on us to get new G enclosures in. So the enclosure you're going to see me use in this video, this black enclosure, is already drilled because we pre-drill all our enclosures when they come in. It also has um, the hole drilled in the top and it's milled for a 510, but you'll notice that it's milled for a smaller 510. We actually turn our 510s down so they fit better in the box. You don't need to do all that. I'm actually going to use a full 22 millimeter 510 so that my box ends up looking like your box. I'll talk more about this up close, about the placement of your 510, all those kind of things. Um, so what we'll do first, we'll kind of, we'll get our enclosure prepared. I'll talk about getting your holes drilled. We'll get our magnets put in. So that's all set up and ready to go. And we're going to set that to the side and make sure magnets and everything have time to dry as far as the epoxy on the magnets go. So while we're doing that, we're going to set up our, our battery slit or MOSFET. We're going to go through this in detail, okay? So uh, I'm going to try to make sure I cover every little fine point right here. All these small things can really add up to make a huge difference in your project. So let's take a look. So let's take a look at our enclosure real quick. What you, if you ordered a G-Box for this project, um, what you're going to get is just literally a nice square sided G-Box. You'll notice this one's already got the holes in it. We'll talk about that in just a second. So you'll have your door and your enclosure. Um, now, on your, on the side here, where you put your MyTech switch, what you're going to want to determine, if you just want to hold your box in your hand and kind of work with it and see where you think the best placement is for you, where you want your switch to be at. Maybe you want a little bit lower than this, maybe you want it, I'm going to be honest with you, I've got this one about as high as you can put it in the box and not run into trouble getting a nut on it. That's where it's always felt best to me. And this is actually, um, these. this is one of the enclosures that Nikki uses for her apprentice mods, and that's, uh, we met her working on designing the box, that's what we decided a nice high placement was really good. Um, so. Right now, the placement on this one, the center of the hole is, I don't remember off the top of my head, let me get a rough measurement here, um, five-eighths from the top of the box to the center of the hole. So I, I would say don't go any higher than that or you're going to run into some issues. One thing you want to do when you're taking your measurements um, and getting ready to, to drill your hole, make sure you get your door on. 
make sure you take a good measurement across the face and put you a center mark when you go to drill your hole. Now, um, this is a 12 millimeter hole right at a half inch or so. Um, and if you'll put you a, you know, put a half inch hole in it, if it's a little tight, just kind of ream it out a little bit, or you can even use a 9 16 drill bit, whatever you prefer to do. Now, on top, um, what you're going to see here is that this was already been uh, through drilled and milled. You will notice, though, that the the mill spot is much smaller than 22 millimeters. We actually went with a standard size on this one, and this uh, kind of probably see better there. It's smaller, but anyway, we actually turn our 510s down uh, so that it fits in the box better and the, the milling doesn't get over the edge. That's not a big deal. I'm actually going to use a 22 millimeter 510 on this one, so my box looks just like yours that you're building. And what we're going to have is a raise in it. Now, if you've got access to uh, either a milling machine or a decent drill press that doesn't have any run out or not a lot of run out rather or access to machine shop you can always have your box milled down it's not important that you have the 510 offset okay you can put it in the middle you can put it on the opposite switch side it really doesn't matter so we're gonna you're gonna see we've got plenty of room to work in this box now what i do on these we use a 7 16th through hole I'm sorry, yeah, 7 16 through hole, which is going to be, if you see, is a little sloppy in the box. Um, since we have our counterboard in here, that's not an issue. If you get a nice center hole and you, you know, measure out, center your hole up well, punch a 3 8 hole, you may have to ream it out just a little bit, but 3 8 ought to be right at where you want to be. Um, like I say, we go a little larger because the, the, the milling pocket is actually what centers the 5 10 in ours. If you want to go 7 16 is just fine, and if you have to ream your 3 8 a little bit to one side because you were off center or something, we can always tighten it down with a nut and get this just right and center when we get done. But that's enough about holes. I'm sure you can get your holes in your box. You just think it through. Think about where you want your placement at and everything else. You'll notice this back door is a little rattly right now. You're rarely ever going to get an enclosure that's got a really tight back door, but don't worry. At the end of this project, I'm going to show you how to make this door super, super tight. This is a little trick that I've been doing for a long time, and uh, I'm going to share it with you. Anyway, so let's talk about magnets. Okay, so you got your magnets, and magnets seem like such a small thing, but I'm, I'm going to show you how you can make this really easy. Now, if we had extra magnets, I'd show you a different way, but we've got exactly enough magnets to do this box, so we need to make sure we get our polarity right, so you don't want, you know, positive sticking up, positive sticking up, because your door will actually repel instead of uh, hooked together. So what we're going to do right here, I'm going to take these apart, I'm trying to get this where you can make sure, I'm just going to take these apart in the middle, where you're at, I'm going to take a Sharpie, put an X right here on the bottom. And you will understand why we're doing this here in just a minute. So put an X on the magnet in the middle right there, okay? It's really important to keep up with that. Like I said you'll understand exactly why in a minute. Now we're going to put our enclosure magnets in first, the smaller ones. So what you'll need, I like to use a nail, just something with a flathead on a screw works fine. Uh, any kind of piece of metal that you can hook a magnet to because what we're going to do when we dip these in our epoxy that we mix up, we're going to use this to stick it in the box and then slide it off like this. Okay, you also want some kind of rag handy because as soon as we get our magnets in, we're going to come back and just wipe off the extra epoxy, you know, if there's any, just really excessive here. So anyway, like I was saying in a couple of past videos, if you can get you a couple of little clamps like this, can make things really handy. Because every once in a while you put one of these magnets in, it'll try to back out, and what you can do is just grab it with a clamp and hold it down. There's nothing worse than getting all your magnets in, waiting on epoxy to dry, and then you realize you've got one raised up. Um, it's really difficult to get those back right once you've done that. Let me zoom out a little bit here so you can see what all I'm doing. Okay, so as far as epoxy goes, I've just got some, I've got JB brand five minute epoxy here. Brand really doesn't matter, okay? Um, so, let me mix this up real quick. I say it's. I think it's important to get like five minute epoxy. Look, you don't want something that's like thirty minute or hour or some shit. But you don't want anything that's instant either. Um, make sure you put out. We're not gonna put out a huge amount of epoxy here, so make sure you get good even amounts of your hardener and your epoxy. Um, okay, let me get that screwed back on. We're gonna mix this up here. Always just take 
piece of wire, I always have wire laying around, and that's what I use to mix up my epoxy. Make sure you mix it up well. That's another thing you don't want to do is take your time putting your magnets in and find out you didn't get your hardener and epoxy mixed very well, and they push out of the box. Now, that's better than getting something backwards or having your epoxy set up and your magnets not be flushed because you can just redo it. But still a pain in the ass, so just take time, mix it up, make your little pile here. So here's what we're going to do. Let me get going before my shit sets up. We're just going to take our nail to our small magnet right off the top, just like this. Dip this in the epoxy. What you want is just a little drip right on top, and as it's running down the side there, we're just going to press that in. You probably didn't see that too well, so I'll do it again. Take your next magnet, clip it off. There you go. Make sure... They come right off of here. If you drop one, put it back on the stack of magnets and make sure you got your polarity right. Wipe that off. So we'll just go right through that. There's another one. Wipe that one off. The last one for the enclosure. And zip that one right off. And now we'll start on our door. So that's the reason we put our X here so we can keep track. You want to flip this over and come off the end of this one, okay? The one with the X on it needs to be the last one and needs to be turned down. Just get that on there. Very important to keep these magnets straight. And I say there is nothing more frustrating than getting a box built and realize you've got one magnet on your box backwards. Trust me, I've been there. Sometimes, every once in a while, you get an enclosure that wants to be stubborn like this. I will show you how to deal with this one in just a second. Let me find something to tap this down with. I really should have had something here. I'm just going to work that in. Work it in. Okay, that one's kind of stuck. So our last magnet, make sure that your X is away from the nail, okay? That's going to be the one that's kind of a pain because if you hold it in your hand, you might have forgot which way you turned it. Okay. That magnet right there is being a little stubborn. I'm just going to take something. And mash it down. And there we go. What you want to do right now is take and look and make for damn sure all your magnets are set down in there really well. And we're just going to take a rag that I left over here on the other table. While this epoxy is still wet, and we're just going to give everything a nice little wipe. Okay? You don't want to use any acetone or anything right now. The problem with using acetone to wipe everything up right now, because we will use some acetone to final clean the box, okay, when we get done, but your epoxy is not hard yet. Um, and when your epoxy is not hard and you put some acetone on a rag and you start wiping on these, the acetone can actually infiltrate in behind the magnets and cause your epoxy not to set up because acetone will eat away at epoxy especially when it's wet. Now later when it's dry, it's not a big deal because um, the acetone won't be able to infiltrate the holes there. But anyway, okay, we've got our magnets in. What we're gonna do right now is set our box just over to the side. We're gonna work on get some other things together. And don't put your box too far away, okay? Leave it where you can see it, right here out of the corner of your eye, so that way if you do have a little pocket of air or something that starts backing all these magnets out, you'll see it. Um, and like I say, if you have a magnet that's just kind of coming out, th that does give you any trouble, and you might from time to time, just put your little clamp on it or something like that. You could even take a flat piece of wood and put this down on it and put something heavy on top of it it'll just hold it in there. Now with the door, it's a little bit different. You're going to have to kind of clamp those individually, or if you have extra magnets, what we usually do is just put a magnet on the back of it right here to hold pressure on this magnet. That works really well. Now, I don't have extra magnets for this project here because I brought just enough to do this with the house. But if you've got extra magnets, put one on the back, even if they're not coming out, to make sure they hold in there really well. Okay, so let's start making up our internal mechanical portions of the enclosure. So get your sled out should have your sleds ordered, whether it's a drip 3D sled or what other brand is fine. Now, your clips are typically going to be the same across all brands. You're going to have one that's kind of flat and one that's got like a spring clamp on it, okay? The ones that are taller are the ones we're going to use for the ground. I'll kind of show you why in a second. But first off, let's flip our sled over. 
And like I said, we're going to use the ones that have got kind of the, the springy feel for our negatives. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. If not, I'm sure you can get it. We're just going to slide this right down in this 3D printed section. You'll see a little clip on the back. And I'll show you this a little better up close. So push that in there. Then we're going to get one of our flat ones. We're going to push it into the one that's marked positive. And flip it around and do the same thing on this end. Negative with the spring. If I can get it to push in here. There we go. And the flat one for the positive. Now, once we get these pushed in here, we're going to lay this back down on the table. Take as anything you got. And we're just going to use the end of it and push these all the way down, okay? All the way down in there. This one too. Push it down a seated well. Push that one down. And then what we're going to do is flip them over. And what you'll see, see how that positive is off just a little bit? Try to center these up as best you can. So just use a little pair of pliers or screwdriver or whatever. I just like to try to center up things as best I can. Um, and this is one of those things I was saying that it's all in the details, right? Get things really nice and centered up and you kind of see hope you can see that it was focusing well. Things are nice and centered up there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, since this is in a series configuration, let me set this in a box where I can show you kind of what it's going to look like. So you kind of see how our batteries are going to go in and everything, but um, our ground that goes out will come off of here at the top. Our positive will come off and go to the 510 here. So at the bottom, what we need to do is actually make our series connection across these two poles at the bottom, the bottom of the sled. So what we're going to do is this right here. We're going to stand this up. That's why I like these little clamps. I like to grab my workpiece. We're going to just stand up like this right here. Now what a lot of people like to do, and I don't usually do this. This is an option, though. Um, you can grab right here. If you got a smaller pair of pliers and kind of squeeze that a little bit. But you'll see in a second with a 3D print sled why I think that's not needed. So anyway, we're going to need our soldering iron. We're going to need a piece of wire right now. So I'll tell you what, get your soldering iron plugged up. Uh, get you about, I don't know, six, seven inches of wire out. And uh, come back and show you how we're going to make a nice, tidy little bar right here. Okay, so let's make us a strap to go across the bottom. What we're going to do is connect <clears throat> this positive and negative post. Now, I hope that you watched episode two because we talked about soldering and uh, wire management, all kind of stuff like that. But get your soldering iron out. Make sure it's clean and ready to go. I'm going to put this here where it's comfortable for me to grab, but still not in my way. Get your piece of solder. Don't, don't worry about having a whole roll. Just pull your little piece off. And actually, for this first one, I'm going to roll this out like we did in the first video. I'm going to stick this out like this right here. Actually, just let me move this out of the way for now so you can really see what I'm doing here. What I'm going to do is grab me a, a length of wire. And I'm actually going to strip this off uh, pretty far. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to strip probably an inch of it off. So there we go. So I've stripped like an inch of wire off. And what I'm going to do is twist this together really well, nice and tight. And then I'm going to give me some flux paste, just like we talked about in our last video. Now, like I said, don't get carried away with the flux. It does not take a lot, but just kind of stick it in there, wipe that shit off. You don't want to run it everywhere. It's just going to make a mess. But make sure you got a decent little conservative coating on your wire, okay? Um, and now we're just going to run down our solder. And as we run down it, we're going to let that go across our wire like so. If you get a little drip on it, just run it down. Now, let me show you what that did for us. So what we've got is a solid, more or less solid, soldered wire right there. You see what I'm talking about. And the only reason I do that, I just don't like to have frayed looking wires. I like everything to be nice and tight. So... It's an extra step that you don't have to do. Nobody's ever going to see it, but it's one of those things that matters. So let's just hold this up to here, see about how much we need. And we say it's like literally probably right at an inch that we need. So clip that off where you know you're going to go across both contacts. 
And we'll just leave that laying right there for just a second, okay? Now what I'm going to do is this right here. And this is somewhere that you need to be, Don't I don't want to say speedy, okay? But you need to not be taking your time when you make this connection, okay? Let's make sure that our soldering iron is completely cleaned off. I'm actually going to, this is my little tub. Just paper towel, saturated in the water. So we talked about this in one of the last episodes, but make sure your soldering iron is clean. It makes all the difference in the world, okay? Now I'm just going to take this. All we're going to do is pre-solder these battery connections. So I'm going to put a little flux paste on my solder. And right when we go at this, I'm just going to put the solder on the tip of the iron and let it drip right down on that battery sled connection, okay? A little bit more flux. Now, the reason we're doing this is because this is a 3D printed sled, okay? Now, you could make this connection off the sled and then press the clips in. It would be a real pain in the ass. But what happens here is this. When you put heat on these clips, this 3D printing material is, is going to melt slightly, okay? Now, it's good for us in a way because, let me show you, when, this, when we get this a little hot, and it melts the sled a little bit, it actually sets these clips into the sled to where they're not going to pull out and move around. On the other hand, if we hold our solar and iron here too long, it's going to heat this sled to the point that it's non-usable. It's going to make the material brittle, and it also may just completely burn through it. Now, what's important is this. Your solder is going to cool off a lot faster than the 3D printed material underneath. So once you make these solder connections, just stop for a minute and let everything cool down. Now one thing I am going to do, since I'm already soldering these two pads right here, I am going to flip the sled over. Like I say, being careful not to hit these prongs or anything. I'm going to grab this, and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on this end of the sled. So later, when we get ready to come back, and make connections to this side of the sled, we won't have to wait. This will be nice and cool, and we've got plenty of time right now to take care of this. So once again, a little bit of flux on our solder, and we come right here, and just enough that the solder takes onto the clip, okay? Um, that's way too much solder. Don't get too much solder on this. Just makes a mess to clean up later. Just a nice little coating, and here we go. And you see that nice little puddle right there? Now later, when we come back to connect our wiring to this and actually make something functional, it's not going to take us forever to get a solder connection right there. We're just going to be able to just barely hit this, and it, it's going to take right in, okay? So what we're trying to do is decrease our contact time later, okay? What that's going to facilitate is not making this 3D printed sled brittle. It's also going to make a really nice full penetration solder joint when we get our wires and everything ready to go. So what I'm going to do right now is flip this back over and we're going to get ready to make this bar contact ready. I'm going to call it a bar contact, okay? That's really what it is, a crossover between uh, these positive and negative poles to uh, dress these up and make this series connection here. Um, but one thing you want to do, just like when we did any of our other wire, we're going to put just a little bit of flux paste on the end of this. Now, this is what's nice about having this coated in solder right now, is that we're not going to add anything to this, okay? We're not going to try to put any solder on here or anything. We may put just a little bit on the end of our iron to make sure it makes a good connection as we go down there. That's why we'll have this roll sitting right here ready to go. But we're not going to really add any solder. We've got plenty right here. When we make this connection, these will flush out and look really nice. If you, if you see closely... Um, they're nice solder, uh, the puddles of solder look nice and solid and clean, but they are raised up a little bit. When we actually get ready to lay this on here, and uh, the way that I'll show you to do this makes things really easy, but um, I'm actually waiting on Lisa to get here with my tweezers, so I'll be right back. So, yeah, special delivery tweezers from Lisa. I had lefties at the shop. Anyway, so let's grab the little strap we made, let's call it. And I'm just gonna put, I said, just a little bit of flux on here, just dip it in a little bit. And what we're gonna do is lay this, and I'm gonna try to, obviously a little out of position here, trying to show you all this, but um, what we're gonna do is hold this down on here, okay? I'm gonna put just a little bit of solder on my iron, I'm not trying to add solder, just trying to get it hot, and I'm gonna hold it down right in the middle and just mash it down. And you'll see it take on both sides and we have the added benefit 
that do you see all the ground straps sunk down in 3D printed sled just a little bit and later connection? Let me see if we can maybe get this closer, get some focus so you can see it. So you see I kind of made a little trench right there. Kind of instantly hooked to both uh, clips. And we look pretty good. That's nice and tight. You know, it's down in there. We're not going to have any problems with anything shorting out on the box or anything. That's what you're looking for. Nice, clean connections. Um, that's the main thing. Just make nice, clean connections. I mean, actually, right here, if you'll see on this negative side, we've got a good connection, but there's not a whole lot of solder there. I'm actually going to go back and put just a little dab right there, which is really easy now that we've got everything really super clean. Just clean off our soldering iron, and what we'll do is just take just a little bit of solder and just hit it, just very momentarily, okay? It doesn't take much heat at all to make a really good connection when you got things really clean. So anytime you need to go back and add, just wait for everything to cool down so you don't put a lot of heat on your sled. You can make really nice, solid connections, okay? That's what you want, really nice, solid connections. Anytime you don't have a solid connection between... Uh, anything is electronic you've got a potential for building up electrolysis and just causing craziness later on okay so let's move on and talk about setting up our mosfet with our resistor and getting all our internal wiring set up okay at this point we're ready to make uh start making our mosfet anyway okay so oh look it's sweet tart here pan back sweet tart my sweet tart came outside to visit me Say, hey, it's little sweetheart, little FT. Okay, sorry, kitten break. Anyway, okay, so we've got our MOSFET. We've got our 15K resistor. Well, if I can get it in the frame. Um, so main thing here is there's a lot of ways to connect this. What you're going to do is connect this 15K resistor to your outside legs of your MOSFET. Um, so this is the way I like to do it. Um, if you look at any of Nikki's boxes, this is the way she does it. I like to just hold the MOSFET right on the back. Or not the MOSFET, I like to hold the resistor right on the back, cup it right up in there. Take the leads, one lead at a time, of course. Wrap it right around there. You can see that. Take the other one, wrap it right in between those, and pull it tight. And straighten your legs back out. Here, let me push that down a little bit. What I'm going to do is pull this off to the side, and then we're just going to snip that excess wiring off. Once you snip the excess off, that's what you'll be left with on the back right there. So you can see the way those are wrapped around. Now we'll get to pulling them like, I know you're going to be, your tendency, my tendency is to want to pull these really tight and get them really flush down on there, and you'll run more risk of bending your legs out too far or rupturing something so that's pretty good right there here i'm going to zoom in we have to really see what i'm doing here so anyway what i'm going to do right now is take just a little piece of wire or anything you can even take a piece of solder spine and i always like to use flux go over this and over this and over this you don't get sick of hearing me say it but we're just going to put just a little bit of flux just a tiny amount you may not even be able to see it from the camera like i say Flux is something that you just don't need a lot of, okay? I'm going to clean off my soldering iron. Now, same thing here. We don't want to, most of us get ruptured by heat, okay? So if you put your soldering iron down on this and just hold it there, you're going to run the risk of damaging it, okay? So what we're going to do is take just a little bit of solder, and the process is we're going to put the solder to the soldering iron, and then we're going to immediately touch where the leads meet, okay? And if you don't get it all in one shot, just put a little at a time until it binds, okay? Do the same thing again here. Just a little bit at a time until you see a nice bind. There we go. And see, I got a little bit on the middle. Make sure you scrape that off of there. Get that in there. Wipe our soldering iron off. And I'll show you what we got here. So you kind of see what we've got there. We've just made little solder joints out on the edge of those legs, our resistors tucked up in our MOSFET nice and tight. Everything looks good. So now let's start laying everything out in the box and see where we want to put things. First, we're going to get our box and we're going to go ahead and install our switch and our 510. So let's do that right now. Okay, 
installing our switch in a 510 is pretty easy. Um, one thing we are going to do before we get our switch put in the box, you'll see these terminals are pretty long. We're going to snip these off. I'd say at least here, I'll show you about how long you want to keep them. Hold on. So that's about how long you want to snip your terminals off. Make sure you don't snip them really low because two things can happen. You snip them off really low, um, you're going to heat the switch up too much internally. And number two is that uh, whatever this black poxy paste shit is, they use the silly switches. If it gets up on a terminal while you're trying to solder it, it's going to wreak havoc and trying to make a good joint right there. So I say these are probably right at an eighth of an inch long, and that's plenty. Um, but anyway, snip those off beforehand. Now we're going to install our switch and nut in the box. Okay, once you got your once you got your switch hand tight in here, what we're going to do is go ahead and tighten it up. Now the way I like to do it is I like to just get like a pair of needle nose or even the end of your uh, wire strippers if you got something like this. Just grab the body of the switch lightly, don't put a lot of pressure on it, and just actually turn the body of the switch instead of the nut, okay? And if your nut gets a little out of line, turn it back into line. There we go. But the main thing is right here, you want the switch with the terminals running vertically on the box, if you see what I'm saying there, okay? Uh, you'll understand why in a little while. And also, if you can, try to get your nut to line up horizontally, parallel with the edge of the box. That's going to make, that's going to facilitate putting the door on later a whole lot easier, okay? So like I say, just get that snugged up. Don't get, don't think you got to just crank down on that switch, okay? You got to remember, there's not any vibration or pressure that's going on. Get it nice and snug, but don't grab the switch so hard that you crush the switch. If you've ever seen a lot of these MyTex, it's not going to say all the time, sometimes they collapse by themselves. A lot of times they'll collapse when guys grab them too tight right here and it breaks the seal of this epoxy that they've used to, to make the switch. So just be careful with that. Okay, next thing is the 510. Now we're going to have to do something before we put our 510 on. So let's bring it over here and take a look. Okay, if you got a bare tube V2 510, you're going to notice it comes in pieces, okay? There's no reason to take these apart. What you want to do on the V2, the bare tube 510, the V2 series, what you're going to want to do, if you see where it's threaded right there in the middle, and you can actually kind of screw that out more, you can back it off some. If you'll get that, what happens is, if you leave this too loose, you see how it's kind of jiggly, what it'll actually end up doing is hanging up a lot more. Um, get this thing, if you'll just kind of spin the bottom nut to where it gets snug, okay? You don't hear the 510 rattling around anymore in there. And it's going to be about when the threads get into that channel right there, it's where it gets nice and tight. But if you can shake it, it's not rattling, it just needs to be snug and putting pressure, oh, sorry, and just putting pressure on that internal spring. So. That's about where we want to be right there, okay? The next thing we're going to do is lay out our ground strap. I'll show you what we're going to do with it in just a second. Okay, here's one thing I do want to do just for this part because I'm going to put a little bit of heat down on this ground strap, so I'm actually going to lay it right here. Okay, so what we're going to do right now, we've got everything laid out. We're going to trim us some pieces of 14-gauge wire. Now, on the positive, we're going to do maybe three inches of wire and then on the negative I'm actually going to go a little bit further just to make it easier on me later I'm going to do like five or six inches okay so get that together let's go ahead and strip the ends on both of these I'm actually going to pan back a little bit so you can see a little bit more about what's going on um, I'm going to strip this end right here now what I say if you've watched episode two um, you pretty well know what we're doing right now so I'm not going into detail if you want to watch kind of like the basics of soldering go back watch episode two and uh, you'll have a really good understanding of everything okay um, so anyway let me do this right here I'm actually going to take that little piece of solder that had rolling around here right here and what I'm going to do I am going to take a little bit of flux and put it on here and I'm just going to go ahead and prep this 510 right here. Now what this is going to do, make sure before you do this, you've made that adjustment we've already talked about because that is going to seal the placement of the depth of the 510 where we tightened it before, okay? Now also, I'm going to take just a little bit. I'm just going to drop some on there. It's going to have a tendency to want to come with us. That's fine. All I did was just seal the hole in that ground right there, okay? So we've got solder on both of those. We're also going to take this right here, both our wires. 
I'm going to put a little paste on them. Let me lay this down, make sure I'm to where you can see me here, which I believe I am. Anyway, so I've got a little bit of paste on the end of that wire. I'm just going to take a solder that right there, just like that. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. Once again, make sure we're clearing off our soldering iron. There's no reason to get a bunch of black shit all over our solder. We just clean it each time. Okay, same thing with this wire right here. We're just going to put a little bit on the end so we've got a nice little baiting surface to go to. Now, this is going to be our ground right here, okay? So, this is going to be super simple. We've already got both of these soldered. All we've got to do, put that on there, a little bit of heat, and you'll see that ground strap take solder in just a second. There we go. Now, if you've got a little void of solder, just get a little bit on your soldering iron, and hit it right there. What you need to come out with is a really nice looking solid penetration. I'll show you just a second when I pick this up. The main thing you want to make sure of is that solder is penetrated all the way through the back of the ground. You don't want later when you're trying to tighten things up, they start coming to pieces, okay? So if you see that's penetrated all the way through, got a nice little solder joint right there, okay? Now we're going to do the same thing on the 510. This one's going to be about the same way. We're just going to, once again, clean off our solder and iron. We don't want to start adding a bunch of corrosion and oxidation in with everything we've got prepped so well. So we should take this, set it on here, and just mash this down until it completely takes, and you see a nice puddle of, of uh, whoop, see, that happens sometimes. <laughs> anyway, you see your solder get really nice, puddled up, nice, shiny little puddle of solder right there, okay? I will say this, the longer you hold that solder and iron on there, the warmer the wire is going to get, but if your wire is getting warm way back here while you're soldering, you're probably holding it on too long, okay? So if it gets to the point you can't hold it, stop messing with it because you're really getting too hot. But what we got there is a really nice, tight, tight soldering joint, and, and that's going to help us alleviate any kind of electrolysis or anything. We've got nice connections there. Okay, so we've got our 510 made up. We've got our nut for our 510. We've got our ground strap. Let's get it put in the box. So we've got everything made up. Let's set our boss over here to the side out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and put our 510 in the box. And like I say, mine's already milled, but I'm not going to use that mill hole. Um, like I say, you may want to do a centered 510 or whatever. Um, what you're going to want to do with your ground strap here is take, I'll show you this after a minute, it's kind of sometimes hard for me to do stuff and show it to you all at the same time. But anyway, what I did was just make a bend in that wire right there, okay? You'll understand that in just a second. Put this on here and we'll slip this on. So, if you can see inside the box, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Anyway, the re you can see, obviously, the reason I bent that. I want to tuck the ground down in that bottom corner down there. I don't want the strap hanging out the side or, or some shit like that. It just it looks nasty. So, what I'm going to do right now is take and just kind of work the ground wire around just a little bit and kind of hide it right underneath that MyTech switch where it's nice and out of the way. Like I said, that's one of those things, just little stuff matters. Let's slip the nut over this, and we'll get to getting this threaded by hand. Now, for this part of the operation right here, we're not going to, like, super, get this 510 super tight. What we're going to do is snug it up. I'm going to show you why in just a second. We're going to get it snug, okay? Now, that's, that's feeling a little snug right here. Now, I'm going to tuck all these wires in here. You see these are way too long, and just believe me. Better way too long than too short at all, okay? So our magnet should be totally dry by now. We're going to stick our door on. And we're going to look right here at the top of our mod, okay? What we want to make sure of after we've snugged that up is that that 510 is just perfectly centered. Now you can measure, you can do it however you like, but what I like to do is just really just eyeball it and make sure that it looks right to your eye, okay? If you if your hole is a little overboard or whatever, it's not a big deal. I mean, you can come back later and move it or whatever, but uh, just make sure that it's nice and centered on the box, okay? Now we're going to take the door back open, and we're going to go ahead and tighten this up. Now, just because we checked it at one time really doesn't mean much. After we get this 510 really nice and tight the way we like it, Mine's going to tighten up a little tighter than y'all's because that milled spot is actually going to give on it. So yours should tighten up nice and firm right when you go to tighten up. Anyway, okay, let's put the door back on. And we're going to look at it. Yeah, that one stayed nice and centered. If you tighten yours down and it pulled off center a little bit, 
simply loosen it up, make the adjustment. But let's get this right right now. Let's not get everything in the box and then have to go back later and adjust the 510, okay? Um, okay, so I've got my MOSFET, as you can see. I've got the tab turned down. I'm going to lay this right here on the table, okay? Now, here is what we're going to do. I'm just going to label these out for you. This center leg right here will go to your 510 ground strap, okay? The outside leg, this would be the one, if you're looking at it with the face down, all the way on the right side, will go to the negative output of your battery sled, okay? This leg over here, We'll go to your switch. And I'm going to show you how we're going to get all that power in just a second. Okay, so let's do this so everybody gets a good visual here. I'm actually going to press these wires down. We're going to lay, not install, but just lay our battery sled right here into the box, okay? Now you can put this MOSFET any type of place you want to. See, some people like to hide the MOSFET down in here. And that would be a really good idea if we had any kind of voltage meters or screens or anything going down in this area, okay? We don't. What I'd like to facilitate with this box is making this box really easy to work on later. So we're actually going to take our MOSFET and put it right down here since we don't have anything else to worry about. Now what we're going to have to do, the positive wire or the, the positive input to the 510 is actually going to land directly on our five or on our positive output from the battery sled so right here to right here okay now this wire being this length will facilitate the movement of the 510 up and down you don't have a problem there um, the ground from our board or from our battery sled is going to run down to our MOSFET okay so we know we're going to have to pull a wire off here so when we take our battery sled back out we're actually going to install a wire on here that runs around the back and runs right down in this area right here and the last wire we need is actually a positive trip let's call it a trip wire okay that's really what it's doing to provide power into the switch so we hit the switch we put power to the mosfet and close the gate for the ground to the 510 okay basically again it will fire off ground the positive will always be here the mosfet will fire the ground so what do we need to do what we need to do is bring, we need to clip this wire, the positive input, to our 510 so that it lays right here on our positive, on our battery sled. We need to install a wire here like we just talked about. We need to bring a positive supply over to our 12 millimeter MyTech switch. And we also need to take a power out to the MOSFET off of this right here. Now, in general, I would like to use a smaller wire gauge to do the switch with. For this project right here, we're actually just going to use the 14 gauge wire we've got right now, okay? We're going to make it look nice. We're going to trim it out really well. But if you want in the future, you can use something smaller, something like uh, something like this 24 gauge wire I've got right here works really well. Well, like I say, for this project, we're just going to stick with one size of wire. You make it however you want to, though, okay? This does not need to be a heavy gauge wire at all to go to the switch. There will be hardly any amp load on this at all. So use whatever kind of wire you want. But like I said, for this, for starting do it yourself, you're going to use that one roll of black 14 gauge wire and wire everything up with. So let's start doing that right now. Let's get a piece out here. And we'll just kind of, what I like to do is just kind of hold things in there and say, yeah, that looks about right for the switch wire right there for the positive post. We'll clip that off. Okay, we'll lay that up there for our switch wire. Um, take another piece of wire off right here. We will bend this down. Now, we're going to leave this one pretty long so we can clip it off wherever we want. This is going to be from the ground on our sled down to our MOSFET. And then we're going to clip one more piece that will come from our switch down to the muscle as well and I'm also going to clip this one off just a little bit long okay okay in the meantime let's look and see here we need to clip 
this positive wire. Now what I'm going to want to do, well, what I want to do, you do it. You can route it however you want. Like I said, this is your project. You get as creative with it as you want to. But if you'll look at the, the bend that I just made in this right here, okay? I like to have a nice straight out. And then I'm going to actually land that right there. And I'm going to clip that off just so I can land it right on that pad. And I've got a nice, I just want, you know, I like the geometrical look, okay? I like those nice corners that come down. So I'm going to clip all my wires right there. And uh, get my ends soldered, and I'll be right back with you. So you do the same. Get all your ends snipped off, cleaned up, get your solder put on them, and we'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, we've got all our parts and pieces. Uh, we've got our ends stripped, soldered. Um, so what we're going to do right now is actually make a couple more connections to our battery sled right here, okay? So the first connection we need to make this could be done inside the box. I would prefer to just go ahead and do it right now, though. It's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. But um, we're going to put our our switch wire, our positive switch wire that needs to come over. And I'm actually going to lay this one right in front right here. But first, let's do this one. What you need to do is get from your ground down to your MOSFET. It needs to kind of sneak right in behind here. So you'll see how I kind of bent that right there. I'm actually going to bend that a little cleaner real quick. It's just got a nice corner on it. So we've got a nice right angle, and then I'm going to take and bend where I've already soldered it at on the end, like prepped it. If you kind of see the shape that I've bent there, I'm going to bend this out a little bit so it'll sit on here. And what I've done is just hide that right down the rail right there, okay? Now you may put this on, take it off, bend it around to where you need it, whatever you need to do there, okay? Now once again, we're going to solder this to the sled here. You don't need to get carried away with the heat. Just a little bit of solder on your tip to make it fuse. And there we go. Nice clean connection. And that's all you need. It's stop right there, okay? Now stop right now and let that cool off. Do not mess with that sled. Don't move it. Because what's going to happen is you're going to start moving it right now. And that clip's got enough heat in it. It will actually destroy that 3D printed sled. So let's just stop right here with that and let everything cool down. And what we can do is go ahead and put on our wire for our switch. Now, if you'll see, I'm just going to lay this one right here. And we're going to have plenty of room to come over here and catch this upper pole on our switch with it. Okay? So let's get our tweezers. Now, once again, I've got plenty of solder on this wire, so I'm not even going to put any extra on. Just make sure your tip's clean. And I'm just going to let that solder right to there. And we're done, okay? But I'll say, just let that stop right there. With, with the solder and with the heat, more is not better. So I'm going to take just a minute. I'm going to let this sled completely cool down, and we're going to come back and start putting everything inside the box. While we're waiting on our sled to completely cool down, what we'll do is go ahead and wire up our output from the switch. Let me see how I turn this here. I can see it. Uh, something like that, maybe. There we go. Okay. So we've got this piece of wire that we clipped for it. We're also going to bend it on a 90 degree angle. Just a nice little tight bend right there, okay? We see that nice little corner. What we're going to do is lay this wire right down in here. Just cup it right into the switch, and as you can see, my ground switch from the sh my ground wire from the strap of the 510 is kind of poking out. I'm actually going to take my tweezers and just poke this back in here a little bit, get it completely out of the way, okay? And you'll see where we're going to make that connection right there. So let's get just once again a little bit of uh, flux paste. You don't get carried away. You're just going to create a mess in your box if you do. I'm going to hold this. Right against that output of the switch right there. Output or input of the switch that is not directional, but for, for our uses, this will be the output. We get just a little bit of solder. And just made that right to it, okay? With this switch, you're going to want to really limit your contact time, okay? Putting a lot of heat on that switch will destroy it. Just make a nice, tight little solder joint right there. Make sure your solder joint is completely clear. If you hit it the first time and you get some heat on it and it doesn't do what you want it to do, just stop. Don't keep going at it. Let it cool down and then come back with, you know, clean things off. Put you a little more paste on if you need to and then go from there. Don't just keep bearing down on it with the heat. You're not going to do the switch or yourself any favors, okay? So we've pretty much got all the wire we can put in it for right now. 
let's get our sled and put it in the box, okay? Now, what we're going to want to do here, let's make sure everything's tucked out of the way. We've got this wire going here, and on our sled coming from our ground, we're going to make sure this wire is tucked nice and tight to our sled right here. And we're just going to slide everything right up in here like so, okay? You might have to get your tweezers and get some wires out of the way as you start to go in. I always say, that's why I actually stopped the video while I, you know, I thought about doing this video without my tweezers because I didn't want to go to the shop. So I actually sent Lisa to get mine. They're such an important part to just have on hand all the time. So when you get something that you need to do, you can just take care of it and not fight with it. So this is what we look like right now. We've got, we still need to solder our 510 to our positive, And we still need to take care of the switch wire right here. What I'm going to do is bend these around where they look appealing to me, and uh, I'll show you when I get that done. We'll take a look at it. Okay, if you look closely, you can see how I've kind of routed my wires. Now, nothing's soldered yet. I'm going to show you that in just a second, but I've kind of run things so that... Um, let me solder the uh, 510 to there, and then I'll show you a little bit about the switch wire real quick. Okay, so let's do that really quickly here. Um, so we can get to a point y'all can see this at. There you go. You can kind of see that. So but I can't see it. That's the problem with doing videos. Maybe you can see it. Okay. Maybe I can get it. Okay. Keep in mind, put things where they're comfortable to you. A lot of this, you're going to see me kind of out of position and everything, and it's because I'm trying to give you a good look at it. But, um, okay. What we've done, we've got all our stuff cleaned off and all. We've got our, our 510 to our positive. Once again, just take a little solder over here and get it to stick, and just drop that right on there and see I didn't get enough on it that time but I did get it to stick so what I'm going to do is come back with a little bit of solder not that big glob right there of course and I'm just going to reach down in my box I know y'all can't see this but you get what I'm saying because the soldering iron is having trouble picking up this large solder I'm just going to drip it I'm not putting this I'm not putting the solder on the connection okay I'm letting the solder hit the soldering iron and run onto the connection okay and I'll show you all this as soon as it does it right here and I'll show y'all what a nice little puddle this makes. That's what we want. Everything's nice and connected. At this point, don't be pushing on your 510 or moving wires around. Once again, that connection's hot. That 3D printing is going to be hot. It's not overheated, but it's hot, okay? And if you go to moving it, it's going to have a tendency to bend that sled out of whack. So just leave it alone and don't touch it. Next thing we're going to do, we've routed our positive lead over to our switch input. It's laying right here on the inside and I'm just going to reach down in there and Oh, sorry, y'all can't see that. <laughs> I'm just going to reach down in there and quickly solder that connection right there, okay? I am going to hold that wire with my tweezers against the post. Make sure we got good connection. I guess I should have pointed out I had put some flux on this before I turned the camera on. So make sure you've got some flux on it. Now, this is what I truly hate about this type of wire. We talked about this in a couple of other episodes. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but some of the ends of that wiring has actually, it's, it's not like melted or burned, but it's kind of blown up a little bit. Um, it just really doesn't look the greatest. That's why I prefer to use something like Dean's wire. It, it doesn't exhibit those properties when you heat it up, so uh, worth mentioning. Anyway, I'm going to stop right here and let this completely cool down, and I'll be back with you when I'm comfortable that it's cooled down enough. Well, it's been about five minutes. I'm very confident that everything's cooled down, ready to go. So what I've done is taken my leads are going to go to the MOSFET, and I've bent them back out of the way. So what we're going to do right now, we're actually going to install, like permanently install the battery sled. So what I want you to do, and I should have had you do this before we put the sled in the box. So if you're watching this, uh, remember when you go back through it, you're going to see that there's a little bolster right here on this corner that sticks up. What I like to do, because sometimes it will get in the way of the door, um, it's very close to the door. Just take a pair of scissors or clippers or anything. If you just barely touch that, it'll snip right off, okay? Um, and it just gives you a little more clearance for the door right there. One thing you are going to need for this, and I didn't bring this up in the parts, is a piece of ribbon to get your battery extends out with. Now, if you're like me and you have children, especially girl children, it shouldn't be an issue for you. My daughter Kara just made an involuntary donation of this project. It's a small piece of black ribbon. Now, you can get, like, custom ribbon. You can get all kinds of stuff. We have ribbon made that says vaporized nomads on it. It's very 
affordable to come by. So if you want to, you know, make your own box like super custom, that's fine. Um, apparently my scissors are not clipping very well. Anyway, once you clip your ribbon off, take and melt the unresoldered iron just a little bit. And we're just going to leave this kind of, let's call it extra long for right now, okay? Because when we get this all put underneath and all, we'll want to trim it just right for our batteries. But what we're going to do is lift the battery tray out of the box. And if you're using the same 14 gauge wire and I am, it won't be a big deal because when you lift it out, it'll kind of just stick up in the air if you see what I'm saying. And we're going to go ahead and get some epoxy, mix it up, get a little epoxy mixing stand here. And just like I said, just use a piece of wire that's laying around to mix it up with, it'll be just fine. Okay, we've got our epoxy mixed up really well. Now this is one of those places where a ton more is not better, okay? Let me widen this out just a little bit. So I'm going to pull this out of here, and what I'm going to do is just use that same piece of wire to apply epoxy to the back of the slit. I'm just going to hold it open, and I'm going to put some down here on the bottom, on the ends. Now what I am going to be conscious of, where those positive and negative uh, marks are at, I'm going to stay away from those because I don't want epoxy running up through them and making them look kind of messy. Now, it, it'll happen from time to time that your epoxy just gets that way, okay? And it's, it's almost unavoidable sometimes, but for the most part, in fact, I think I just dripped some on there, so you're going to get to see it first hand. Anyway, get your bottom especially covered down here. Get right in the middle. Get it covered. You don't have to get carried away with it. And we're going to take our ribbon. Just made it right on the back right there. I'm going to use the same piece of wire to kind of mat that down a little bit. I'm going to twist it around where I want it at. Get this epoxy out of the way so our ribbon doesn't get back in it. I'm just going to mash that slid while holding the ribbon where I want it at. Right down in the box, okay? Now make sure this is nice and tight against the sides. You don't want a bunch of gaps running around this. You want it looking good. And what I'm going to do right now is take clamp like I was talking about and just clamp that slid right in there okay i want this looking nice and tight and clean all these seams down the side right here i want to see these looking nice and tight in my box and i'm not saying you have to but once again it's one of those things that's going to add to the overall quality and look of your box so if you want to grab another clamp put it on top this one actually seems to be holding pretty well generally if you'll put one right in the middle kind of like so it'll work out pretty well that's holding really nice and tight i'm gonna let this dry and see you in a minute Okay, so we're ready to start wiring up our MOSFET now. So let's lay it out right here on our little, we've made some notes right here. Maybe if you've got your leather and all, make you some notes so, so you keep it straight. We're actually going to take this MOSFET and hide it right down in there. That's where we're going to put ours at. So, and we're actually going to solder right on the ends of the leads out here so we don't get too close and get anything hot. But let's get everything straight here. So inside the box, the very inside, if you're following your diagram, is going to be your switch wire, right? Your positive out of your switch, which is going to be, now if you've color-coded your wire, not used all black like me, you may have an easier time finding these. Really didn't help me very much though, because I'm uh, mostly colorblind, so that's, I guess that's the reason I don't really get caught up on colors a lot of times, but anyway. So, positive switch wire out. We're going to make sure it's all the way in the back corner right here. We need our out for our MOSFET to our 510 ground. That's what's going to ground our 510 to fire it. It's right there tucked underneath that MyTech. We're going to bring it right down the center. Okay, we're right in the center of the three wires, but laying flat against here. And then the last one we'll have, the last one we'll have will be our battery slid negative connection will be on the outside, and that's the one you see loose right here. Let's follow it back up, make sure it's the right one. Yep, we're just going to lay that one right there. And get those all nice and laid in there right now while we can deal with it while it's not connected to anything, okay? Now that we've got all three of those laid down in there nicely, we can lay our moss foot beside our box about where we want it to end up. And we know about where to clip our wires. So what I'm going to do just quickly is just take something kind of sharp. Even these tweezers will work. And I'm just going to mark where I want to cut these wires off. I want the wires cut about right there okay so just made a little mark on the wire you may not even be able to see it in the camera I'm actually going to pull all these wires out as a bundle now keeping them nice and flat okay I'm going to pull these out pull them up and I'm actually just going to reach right here and snip all three of these off okay 
one swift swoop. So what I'm going to do right now is strip the ends of these wires, get them ready to solder, and I'll be right back with you. Now, if you follow along with us in episode two to the parts house, we grab a little shrink wrap kit. So what we're going to do right now is grab a piece of shrink wrap, the smallest one that we can fit over the three wires that we just prepped, okay? So we're not going to cut these super long. Um, let's say probably well, about three quarters of an inch piece. One, two, and three. And we're just going to slip these right over the wire we've already prepped for solder. And you'll see why in just a second when we get everything laid in here. But anyway, we're going to set our shrink wrap kit back to the side here. I always hold all these little snippets. I always like to keep a little box there just to throw those in because they always come in so handy when you're looking for something like that. So anyway, we're going to push the shrink wrap back as far as we can on these wires so it doesn't shrink while we're soldering to our uh, MOSFET. Anyway, push those back in there. What we're going to do now, take our MOSFET, put it right down here in the box, and I'm going to take my clamp that I always got handy, and I'm just going to clamp that MOSFET right in the box, okay? And kind of see what I got there. This may be difficult to, for you to see what I'm doing here as far as solder, but I'm going to start laying these wires back in the box. And as I lay them in here, especially the first one, I'm going to adjust where this MOSFET's at so that my wire falls right on the end of the tab to the MOSFET, okay? Because I want to all solder it right on the end so that I don't have, I don't want to be soldering it close to the body of the MOSFET. I want to keep as much heat off there as I can. I've already put the resistor up there. Probably not going to have a problem, but it's just always a good thing. So let's clamp that MOSFET right there, okay? Now I realize that this may be difficult for y'all to see. Okay, from this angle, it's going to be difficult for me to do this. I'm going to turn it just a little bit, but what I'm going to do is hold this wire down in here on that last prong back there and just let it solder to the MOSFET. I'm going to take the second one. Same thing. The third one. Same thing, just right to the leg of the MOSFET right there. There we go. Now we got some decent looking little solder connections down in here. So I'm going to show you these real quick. So we got everything soldered up right down in the box. Now what we're going to do now is slip our shrink wrap all the way up on where we made our connections. Okay. Anyway, this is what you should end up with is something like this you can use a heat gun a hair dryer or anything just get that get those um shrank down and we're going to put another piece of shrink wrap over the whole outside so i went ahead and uh put some heat to this shrink wrap so what we're going to do right now is hey it's my baby sweetheart keeps coming to see us y'all she's learning how to build mines we're going to get back in our shrink wrap case here and we're going to find a piece of shrink wrap that just fits over I'll take that down that just fits over the MOSFET and this associated wiring which looks like that was going to do it right there now I'm going to hold this up here so clip it about the right length and I'm going to clip it just a little bit long probably about a quarter inch so it didn't have to take much off of there what I'm going to do is slip this over this entire assembly all the way up as far as I can right there just to the end okay I'm going to leave that metal tab hanging out just a little bit so when it shrinks down our metal tab will probably actually be showing right there. Let me shrink this now and I'll show you how we're gonna stick it in here and mount it down. Okay so we got that piece of shrink wrap on. We shrank it down and what I'm gonna do is just kind of I'm gonna work this around, just kind of bend it right there until it's nice and really flat with that box to where when we tuck it in it's got a nice look and if you can see that if I hold it in um, starting to get a really nice clean look right there now i say if you wanted to order a cover you could have to kind of cover all this up but I, I personally prefer not to have covers in my box like i say i like people to be able to see the wire and i like to have access to things to be able to clean it that's just my personal preference you do whatever you like though like i say this is your project you make it like you want so what we're going to do here in a minute we're going to put just a little bit of epoxy right underneath this mosfet and we're going to put it back here and clamp it down first let's look at something on our door here whoop, resistor hanging on 
I'm going to put the door on the box. And what you're going to notice, if you listen, if you hear that kind of clicking around there, the door is not super tight. So to take care of that, we're going to when we mix up our epoxy. I'm going to show you what to do to make that door rattle completely go away. So here you go. I'm going to mix up some epoxy real quick, and I will show you what to do with your MOSFET and how we can easily make this door rattle stop. Okay, we've got our epoxy mixed up. We've got a clamp sitting here ready to go. And what I'm going to do is just reach right here, a little epoxy right in the back of the box where that moss was going to sit, and just a little tiny bit on the back of that shrink wrap, and stick it right back in there, and clamp that down so it stays nice and tight until it dries. Now, what I was talking about with the door rattle, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take just a little bit of epoxy. You don't need much, okay? Do not get carried away with this. If you need more, we can add it later. But right here in the corner, we're just going to take and wipe just a very tiny amount. Okay? Just a little dab right there. A little dab right there. Have your rags sitting by. Any excess that came over, wipe it. Wipe it. And then what we're going to do is set this on something actually get an extra battery sled here to where this stays stood up like this. We don't want to lay the box down on its side and let that epoxy run back in there. So we're going to let this dry. Not completely hard, but we're going to let it dry. And I'll be back in just a second to show you what to do with the door. Okay, so our epoxy is pretty well set up. It's not hard, but it's not going to move anywhere. Like we push on it with a pair of tweezers or something. It's got a little give, but not much. So all we're going to do right now is just lay this down, take the door from this side, let that sit down on there, and let that finish drying. Don't wiggle it around right now. Just let that sit there and finish drying. Let's give it about 10 minutes, and we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, it's been about, I don't know, 15 minutes. Everything's totally dry. Everything looks great. I'm going to show you just a little bonus thing. Now, this is not a have to, okay? If you order like a sled cover or something, you won't be able to do this. But this lip up here on most sleds is, is usually a little bit weak if you're not right up against the, the top of the box. So we're going to do something that's going to look. It's just a little trick deal, okay? I'm not going to show I'm not a woodworker, but grab you something. doesn't matter what it is. I mean, you could use, you could use pearl, abalone, wood, metal, aluminum, whatever. But cut you out a little piece that slips right up here in the box. Now, why do I like this? I like it because it's going to give me a little nameplate right there. Um, you know, if you don't have, obviously, probably have a laser engraver for doing it yourself in your house, maybe you do, but right here, we can take our wood burner and maybe put a serial number in this, maybe sign our name lightly in it, but what I'm going to do is just take an epoxy the edges of this, and this will be a nice stand support to the top of this box, but I'll tell you what. Let me put this in here, and I'll show you what it looks like in just a second. So as you can see, I got my little top piece epoxied in. I think it just makes a really nice accent. Now, since this was untreated uh, burl wood, I went ahead and just put a, I had some epoxy left over, so I went ahead and put a light layer right across the top of it so it'd have uh, a little bit of shine. Hope you can see that. Anyway, just make sure you wipe off any excess epoxy around, but this is going to give the top of the sled some real rigidity here, and uh, I just think it breaks it up. It makes it look nice, you know? Um, I don't know. Do whatever you want, though. Um, you can do a lot of things here to really dress this up, but I really think that's just a, a nice little touch with that one little piece of wood. And like I say, we could always uh, go back and burn our signature or just a little, you know, if it's your first box, maybe put number one in it or the date or something. Uh, just a nice little touch, plus it's really functional. Also, it turns out, you know, I said we were going to have to clip our ribbon. It looks like we're going to be about the perfect length, so I'm just going to leave that alone for right now. Uh, I'm going to let this dry. And uh, we're going to put some batteries in this thing here in a minute and see how she does. I'm going to let this dry up really well. Go eat some lunch and I'll be back with you. Okay, so going to eat lunch, came back and everything's pretty dry. Um, we do have some little piece of epoxy and stuff on the outside of the box. We're just going to take some acetone and clean all that up. The acetone won't hurt the anodizing. But we're essentially at the moment of truth. To tell you what, I'm going to flip the camera over to see me. 
And uh, we're going to put some batteries in this, but I'm going to go over a few things to make sure we don't cause a disaster if we accidentally wired something wrong, okay? Okay, so we're at the point that we have finished wiring our boxes. Everything's dry. What you need to do now is get you a pair of 18650s, okay? Now, everybody's got their favorite brand, whatever. These are Sony VTC4s. Uh, the build I've got in RTA right now is about 0.55. It's not going to make a hell of watts. Make sure your batteries are balanced. Make sure they're charged together. Make sure they stay together in this mod. You're running in series. This is a big deal, okay? So, what we're going to do now is this. We're going to put our batteries in our sled. We're going to do a couple of things because you need to understand, even somebody like me that does this every day, you can always make a mistake and have a short in a box. You could have something that's faulty in a box. You could have a switch that's faulty. You can have any thing happen okay so the first time we put our batteries in we're going to pull our ribbon out we're going to put one battery at a time in and the whole time we're going to be ready to snatch that ribbon out of that box okay we're going to have the, the ribbon right here ready to snatch out so like i say you never know what could happen make sure you obviously in a series configuration if you put the batteries in parallel it's not going to do anything but just not work but um Build a parallel box, especially make sure you're taking your time, put things in right. We're gonna put these in. When you snap the second ones in, we really want to pay attention. I say point the mod away from your face. If something does happen, it'll bend out away from you, okay? Now nothing's happening right now. Now what I'm gonna do before I put RDA, RTA, any kind of atomizer right here, I'm gonna hit the switch. I don't hear any sounds, I don't feel any heat, that's, that's what I want, that's what I want to hear. So, still, I'll tell you one thing I didn't do, I need to uh, take your ribbon, while well, I'm just thinking about it here, make sure you heat the end on this thing so it kind of doesn't frazzle and stuff, I don't know, you know, you kind of think about things after the fact, you hear, crack lighter, there we go. So, that won't frazzle, so what we're going to do, we're going to just tuck that right there. I'll tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to go ahead and throw. Now, from now on, I'll put these batteries in here. I actually put this one in first, lay the ribbon over, and put the second one in so that'll tuck down in there really nice. But let's put the door on here. That fits nice. No rattles. We got a nice tight box right here. Okay, nice. I'm going to screw my RTA on here. A pretty high building here. Once again, the first time I fire this, we're going to turn the door away from us, okay? It's just always good to make sure you protecting yourself this is especially if this is your first build you could have done anything wrong and not remembered it okay so i'm just gonna listen for an addy oh she hit <laughs> sounds good okay let's try this we've got a working box people i like it i'll tell you what i'm gonna get cleaned up real quick i'm gonna run up the shop and we'll give you my final thoughts on this we'll compile this video we'll be done for today see y'all just a minute I hope y'all had fun watching all that. I'll tell you what, I didn't mean for the video to go as long as it did, but I'll be honest with you, on the same hand, I'm really glad you got to see every little detail building the box. I think somebody with really minimal building knowledge could take this video and, and effectively build a decent mod. Like I said, I'm not going to uh, labor the point here. Uh, the box turned out looking pretty nice in my opinion. Um, like I say, this is just kind of a simple build. Um, if I had it do over again, I would probably do something other than the barrel wooden top. Uh, but hell, this nice little dimmers thing. Uh, I'll tell you what, I know a lot of you think a series box and the huge clouds and all this. Actually, when I got to the shop, I've been working on letting this video compile. I actually went back and built one of my old Atomics. I got a 1.5 ohm build on here. Um, the flavor is ridiculous and i guarantee you this 1.5 ohm build on here with this series box the batteries will probably last three and a half weeks so i got too much juice in it but anyway i hope y'all enjoyed this like i talked about uh in the introduction to this series i'm actually going to end up giving this box away so watch for that on the next installment it'll be either episode three extra episode four we'll try to have mooch on and talk a little bit about technical things why we put the 15k uh, resistor on the mosfet like I always say, if you want to be in the click, if you want to have an opportunity to win some of the cool stuff we build on here, make sure to join MSBAA. That's MSBAA.org, Mississippi Vaping Advocacy Association. Look, I'll say, 
I've had fun doing this. It's been cool to be able to, to put a video together, share some knowledge. We're going to get on some other stuff. Maybe we'll do some parallels, some regulated. I'll tell you what, y'all comment below and uh, tell me what you'd like to see for the next build video. But let's keep in mind, let's not get too uh, outlandish and wild. Let's kind of progress as we go. So y'all tell me what you'd like to see next and uh, we'll make something happen. Look, I really appreciate your interest in this. I appreciate your subscription to the channel if you're subscribed. If not, please do. Um, I'll say this has been really fun. Um, like I always say. Hey, peace out, nomads.